me today is Sue Ann Webster, one of Australia's leading female magicians and one of my favourite female magicians. And she's going to have a little bit of a chat with us today. So Sue Ann, what inspired you to become a magician and not just an assistant? Oh, well, um, by the way, before I start, I just want to say good on you for doing this. I think oh, that's great. <laughs> Go do something to keep me sane. <laughs> I know with all this lockdown, yeah, <laughs> it's really lovely to see your face. Thank um, you. All right, thinking back, okay, um, you know the concept of um, assistant never really came into my mind. See, you know, I grew up in the sixties, seventies. I'm a bit of an oldie now, you know, and um, so I never saw any magician. I grew up in the western suburbs. I, I never saw any magicians, and the only one except on TV, you know, like yeah. um, David Nixon and Doug Henning, and that, you know. And I just thought, wow, you know, that's really cool. I want to do that, you know, but I didn't sort of, I grew up with not the notion of women have to do this and men have to do that. And so I just got on with my life and it, and see, I got into it late, um, well, later than most, I suppose. Yeah. Um, got in at about um, 22, um, met the most amazing, eccentric, wonderful artist friend of mine now, um, Taroa Wormsley and uh, my mentor and um, and he was an artist so I actually I was there with my dad learning art and um, and it wasn't for a little while that you know we got into puppetry as well and then he showed me his first magic trick and I went whoa I want to do that and then and it, it was him that kept saying um, he said a few times you're a magician right remember you're a magician you're not an assistant you got that you're a magician I went okay yep yeah, sure yeah <laughs> okay I mean we were doing magic together sometimes I went out and helped him but and it was about this time that I got into um into drama and I was learning stage and film and television and I actually I don't like really performing in front of people I know that sounds good yeah. I mean I don't I think love any it. of us did naturally it's not a natural <laughs> thing to do is it I get too nervous so you know this lockdown's not so bad actually <laughs> um no it's yeah, I, I was always kind of heading into wanting to do something behind the scenes, you know, and, um, but Taroa just kept saying, no, you got to do something on stage. And I went, ah, I don't really, no, nah, no, nah, that's okay. And I kept sort of, <laughs> sort of doing stuff at his house, putting on little shows. It was so much fun because we just, we'd, we'd put together um, all sorts of scenery and, and um, paint up our props and, and just have the best fun ever. Yeah. Um, and then he just kept saying that you, you're a magician, you're not an assistant. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. And then I didn't realize what he really meant until I kind of got out and worked. And um, and then I thought, oh, I see. Okay, look, you know, assistants are excellent. Like they're really great. If the magician, you know, if they're doing any kind of large show, they won't be able to do it without an assistant, you know. So assistants yeah. are fantastic. And I've seen assistants that I swear are magicians because they just they just take up the whole show, you know, they're, they're brilliant, you know. Um, well, sometimes they do more of the work in the, in the trick than the actual magician, really, yeah. don't they? <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I've assisted and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but but the actual magician thing, yeah, no, it was just, um, no, i got to do the magic and, um, and and that was it. It's just like, okay, I'll be a magician. And um, I don't know, they, they just, they've got a lot of different ways to hide things, I can tell you. <laughs> and... Um, you know, in the most creative ways. Um, you know, I've been able to hide things uh, even down my back where, I, you know, I'm just a certain, it, you know, and everybody's built differently too. And, you know, especially women. Yeah. <laughs> and um, seeing some uh, beautiful magicians perform uh, all over the world, boy, um, yeah, they can they can really pull things out of places that you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but really they're they um you know out, out of whatever they're wearing that men can't get away with or just places that we have that you know that are yeah. perfect little hiding places that well I think um the perfect misdirection is a pretty face isn't it <laughs> well, you, know, you know saying saying about faces I always found that um you know with women they can get so away that, how, how have you got it coming up on a oh, on, hang on, a minute. on zoom mum you need to mute <laughs> okay Hi, <Mom. laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no. Whoops. Well, see, uh, just looking at you, you know, it, like you put your eyelashes on and you got these beautiful eyes and women can just, if you want someone to look at you, they look at you. If you want them to look down there, you got, you know, the, all of your eyes just 
like that, you know, like yeah. Kaylin from Kaylin and Ginger, sorry, Ginger from Kaylin and Ginger. She was an expert at doing that. Like she, the way she did that on stage, she just like, she first of all go like with her eyes and then like that. It's just, just such a, such a strength about her and women can really work on things like that that um it's something that you definitely grow into like as a female performer like do you remember when you first met me and I was terrified about talking in front of people and remember you said to me oh well, you know just go do some acting classes you know get some confidence and I'm like would you ever imagined all those years ago like 10 years ago that I'd be doing this now doing interviews <laughs> when I had never performed magic talking in my life yeah yeah no look I, I really admire you for doing things like this what what you have you've got what I would always recommend um, a woman have which I don't and that is you've just got the you, you've got what it takes to just get out there and do, you, you get the idea but see I can get ideas and I, I like to inspire people to get on and do it yeah. I love working as a team but you can come up with an idea and you will go and do it mm. and that's what I greatly admire about you and um you just do you just get things done yeah and um and i love that and there's you don't have anything stopping you and that doesn't have to stop women from doing things yeah. you've got an idea you go and do it you know simple i appreciate you saying that thank you <laughs> <laughs> so what if, um what did you find that was the most challenging thing as a female magician okay. like what are the some of the challenges you think that we face that say our male counterparts don't face Okay, um, social stereotype, I think. When I grew up, I don't know about now so much, um, but when I got out and worked in the corporate area, um, you know, I, a couple of times people would be looking for the magician. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I mean, the typical with the tops oh, and tails. And, well. <laughs> and I'm really glad it wasn't a disappointment kind of look. <laughs> it was like, it was, um, oh, really? You're, you're the magician? Yeah, I go, yeah. And, uh, Look, yeah. I'm, I get really nervous. I, I get nervous on every single show. And um, when someone would come up and, you know, they would say something like that, I go, oh, no, I'm just going to disappoint them so much. And I don't want to disappoint people. I want to make them happy, you know. But, yeah, it's like I'm just looking for the magician. Do you know where the magician is? And I go, I'm the magician. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, great. <laughs> I go, yeah, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, and when I say you got to have confidence, it's like, I don't think I've ever had confidence. It's like you, you learn to fake it, I think. Yeah. Um, I ha I've had men come up to me before. There was a man at a corporate gig once and he came up and he said, you know, you're the most confident woman I've ever met in my entire life. I said, oh, you have no idea. <laughs> I'm just so not. But it's, you just, yeah, you just, and this is where the acting comes into it. You just learn to smile and they don't know anything that's going on inside of you. And, you know, all of what you're doing is for them or it should be. And, yeah. um, you know, and you just, you, you give, it's like a gift. You just got to give it and um, smile and, and whatever. So, yeah, I think social stereotyping that they think it's, you know, the magician's going to be a man. And, yeah. um, and I think also that comes into the booking process as well, is that when they're looking for a magician and they see a female, it's, um, I... I don't know, I can't think for people, but I've just, you know, they, they tend to want to go for a male um, in general. I'm not sure about now, but that's what it was, you know, yeah. for me, for me. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, they'd be sort of happy afterwards, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, you are an amazing female magician. Oh, like, yeah. I will never forget the first time when you performed on my show for Cabaret Mystique Hawkesbury and you brought a tear to my eye. You were so professional. Everything was just executed perfectly yeah I just never saw magic in that light until that night and I realized how beautiful magic could actually be oh thank you because well, I think a lot of men get caught up in the method like the methodology of magic and they don't really focus as much on the emotion of it or what you're trying to aspire in other people with it and a lot of your magic is all about making it magical and reigniting that magical emotion in people that they felt when they were a kid watching something like David Copperfield or wow. you know the really <laughs> mystical magic oh thanks I, I I've seen a I've seen a you know some men that are really good at that but I, I think I don't know if it's if it I don't know if it's a woman thing I, I think probably maybe it was the acting that I did like the stage yeah sort of um technique um because you know I I, I was trained at a school in acting um, we had a lot of NIDA teachers and yeah. uh, they're pretty tough on us you know we we'd play the Parramatta Riverside Theatre the big 
the Riverside, you know, the big one when we were very young, um, big Macbeth programs, you know, every, everything. So, um, you know, and uh, the teachers there, there were known Australian actors and they said, um, you know, you got to be on time. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, you lose the gig. All right. <laughs> and they were really strict with that. And, yeah. um, you know, and I was fortunate enough to be able to not only sort of do the acting, but also do the directing as well. And also um, be backstage and understand and watch pro proper professional actors work. And I tell you, they are professional. They are focused. And I've seen a lot of magicians like this, you know, a lot of the, the greats, you know, around the world, they, you know, they're there, they're early, yeah. they're focused, they're ready to go on. They don't miss a beat and they are phenomenal. And I think the professionalism just comes with, you know, you just, um, it's one thing to perform, but it's another thing to, you know, um, it, it, there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes. Um, yeah. and, and while you're on stage, that has to be spot on and professional. And also as, you know, like I, I've helped, you know, magicians before um, and, you know, assist them as well. And, uh, and boy, you have to be spot on to the split second. And yeah, um, yeah you gotta be spot on. It's just, you know, no, no slacking. Um, I think you've had a lot, a lot more of experience seeing like shows too. What was that? <laughs> I said, you've probably had a lot more experience than I have seeing other like magicians perform worldwide too, because you, you've been to Blackpool, you've, you've oh, actually I have judged in competition. One in, place um, I haven't been is the FISM, but I haven't been to Blackpool. Yeah. I'm looking forward. Oh, one. okay. But no, the FISM and, and um, yeah, just really big competitions around the United States and Asia. And oh yeah, there's a lot of great magicians out there. Beautiful, yeah. great magicians that, are very professional and they uh, and they bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> it's lovely. So yeah, it's probably um a, a training like a. I always suggest to try and get some training um, if people are not willing to do it themselves. Yeah, you know, behind the scenes to actually go out there and get taught properly. Yeah, I, yeah. In theatre, like yeah, in because I'm a magician is an actor, really. I mean, like, yeah. seriously, we are we're actors <laughs> playing the part of a magician. Like that's. <laughs> My view. <laughs> it's real. Magic is real. She's she's not she's not thinking straight. I know. No, I'm a bit crazy. I'm crazy. Oh, it's a lockdown. It's a lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm 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 imagining that that's if I were to ask you what was your one piece of advice that you would give a young woman coming into magic or a young man coming into magic, what would be that piece of advice? Wow. Oh. Oh, there's a lot of pieces of advice. Um, I've got, um, I got a whole book here on advice. Look, look. I know. I love <laughs> that book. It's full of advice. <laughs> I love that book. Yes, um, definitely. Where can people buy that anyway? Is Amazon. It on Amazon. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I, Excellent. I don't keep an eye. It's just like it's on there. If people want it, they can have it. It's um digital as well as a book. Um, yeah. As yeah, but it's um it's just snippets of a lot of stuff. Oh, like my whole life of in being in magic and just getting out that um the, the most so creative bits, just the most important bits you know yeah. um advice um yeah try to be professional practice 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 um i'm not a great practicer but i'm <laughs> but i'm an actor um <laughs> you've got great people skills that's all that counts <laughs> <laughs> uh look if it's for you know i think grow a skin you know you you know you in acting, magic, anything on performance, you know, you, you put yourself, you invest yourself into it all. And, you know, if you see that one face that's not smiling, that can really get to you, you know, yeah. on, on the, it can really get to you thinking, what have I done wrong? And you, you come off and think, well, you know, I've got, to, I've got to do better. Like how, and then you start to think, you know, what, it, what can I improve? And what was it that, did, that made that person not smile, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, take I think take our egos out of it as much as possible. Make it sort of it's a gift to people. Um, I'd say yeah, grow a skin for sure. I think there's uh, as a female people, I, I didn't get a lot of unwanted attention probably because I was married. Um, uh, you know, through the whole time, you know, I think uh, th there's some young females that have unwanted attention, and th you know, and they they're doing everything they can to do it do it right. You know, they're not sort of down dressing or anything if you know what I mean like men just love a lady's body and and that's just the fact of it and I think if yeah. we sort of grow up and 
understand that and treat them like I think I think what comes out I think if you treat if you treat them like you know they're your brothers or your uncles or your dads or whatever you know they with total respect you know um and and you can be like an auntie or a sister or, yeah. a niece or something um because you know I've been so blessed you know everywhere all over the world people have treated me so well I've, I've been so blessed there's I can't even think of an, an instance you know anywhere that I've I've been me I mean sure like I, I've have had I've been at the butt end of some really bad a bad situation once um but you know on the whole 99 percent of the time people have been so kind to me they've been so welcoming all over the world there's just been they've treated me like they've treated their brothers brother 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 magicians you know yeah. they're like another male like another just them like it's never been a gender thing it's never been um it's never been about anything except magic and yeah. i think if a, if a woman can do magic and just they're having fun they're serious about it they're you know they're having serious fun like don't get serious but like serious fun you know if they can I mean um Ekaterina I mean you look at her the way she <laughs> does that I can't do that stuff with her with with all those cards and she's phenomenal you just watch her and you just go wow and you know I, what she's actually the next magician for Penguin Live oh. Brilliant. Yeah. So she's, I'm really looking forward to that lecture next week. She's inspiring. Yeah. She's um yeah. absolutely amazing. And and even closer to home, you've got Tam as well, like Tam down down in Melbourne. She's she just does it. You know, like the, there's been no um oh, she just she loves children, she loves entertaining, and that's what she does. It's yeah, it's oxygen to her, you know. She and she's great, she's fun, and she just goes out and does it. So I'd say another thing is just go out and do it. If you love it, do it. Don't worry about what you know what people think. People are gonna think, not everyone's gonna like you, you know. Mm. People are gonna probably hate you. They might be jealous of certain things that you do or have done. They might be inspired by you. It doesn't matter. Just get out there and and do what you love. Just do it and be exactly. professional, you know, yeah. because you know, when you turn up and you turn up. Um, you know, you turn up on time, which is early, and, um, yeah. and you, you're not a burden to the booker as well. You don't leave a mess behind. You know, um, you're clean. You, you know, you've got good breath. Like, <laughs> be very. You got to be very. You know, especially close up. You know, um, you got to oh, be aware of these things yeah. because all of this, all of all of being prepared and and giving the best you can is a gift, and the people know it. You know, yeah. the bookers know it, the, the audience know it. Give them a smile. The, sm the moment you smile, they'll, they'll have a good time. You know, they, they, they're relying on you um, to, you know, whatever you're thinking, they're going to feel. So, you know, just give it to them. Yeah. That's amazing advice. And you're right about our magic brothers. Like, they are our brothers. Like, our brothers. magic has come such a long way since, like, it being just a boys club, you know. Yeah. They're, we're like a big magic family now, like a community. Yeah. And it actually well, has that sense of community, especially since the lockdown, we've all yeah. been banding together. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's incredibly important to, yes, we can still build ourselves as a female magician, but not to create that sex division between us because exactly. we're a family. Yeah. We are brothers and sisters in magic. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't like the device. I don't like divisions. It's like, you know, yeah. people say, do you want to get together doing an, an all-female thing? It's like, hmm. Yeah, okay. I, I will because I'll support the people doing it. But yeah. it's like, uh, yeah, but there's a really great guy magician down the road. <laughs> so it's just magician is magician. It's like mm. I I love I love my brothers in magic. I they ask the most beautiful people. I love the women, I love the men, I love them all. You know, I yeah. love them all. Um and it's all about the magic and, and they've all been so beautiful and uh yeah. I think a lot of them too are, are ex like very welcoming and excited that you, like when you attend an IBM meeting now, like before it was a bit like, oh, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> and now when you go there, they're like, oh my gosh, hello, thank you for coming, you know, and it's such a different vibe now and it's so refreshing. I Let's love it. Let's take you back into history on that one, you know. Um, 
uh, Ken Blackmore, if he gets to watch this. Oh, I love Ken Blackmore. <laughs> and some of the some of the boys when I when I, I turned up for the first time with Taroa, yeah. and he said, come along to the magic meeting. And I went, oh, I don't know, I'm too nervous, you know. And I walked in. See, for me, because I, I grew up in the Scouts, I grew up yeah. you know, boys around me all the time, so it didn't bother me like a, a boy, like all men. It's like, yeah, right. So what? Like, it's, yeah. I've been to conventions where it's just all men. It's just, I don't care. It's all lovely. Um, you know, I love it. Um, but I turned up and. And, and it was just the first time I walked in and they just went, they just looked at me and there was no smiles or anything. And I just went, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It, it was hilarious. And it was just like, no. And he goes, do you want to come again? I go, no. <laughs> and, but, you know, and then a little while ago, I went to one of the meetings and, and I really enjoyed myself, you know. Yes. Um, but see, I grew up a lot. And that's, if yeah, here's some advice, you know. It's just like, don't worry. It's okay. Time will just, and, and you getting confident confidence will change things and yeah. you know that you know they, they're probably just really happy that you turned up you know that you're actually interested yeah. so um so well, our attendance is what keeps those clubs alive so right. yeah it's, it's very important that we do try and make an effort every now and then yeah, yeah. so Sue Ann Phyllis Wong ah Jeffrey <laughs> <laughs> that's his Sue Ann. Yeah, yeah. Jeffrey. ready Jeffrey's Sue available Sue he even waxed his moustache, ready for you. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Here he is. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Do you mind if I stay? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, because I want to I want to talk about the show too with ah. you as well. So so Jeffrey McSkimming, author of Phyllis Wong, and do you want me to mention the other one? Cairo? Uh, yeah, Cairo, Cairo Jim. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. I know you were working on, on that recently so yeah, this morning actually yes that's wonderful i'm you, really looking forward to seeing how it finishes yeah. so the phyllis long time detective mystery novels yep she is inspiration so yeah about, yeah phyllis is this is this is this wonderful life that we have it's just so creative because she everything she does is creative yeah and i mean everything you know she walks the way she walks around the house is creative um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so everything she does is creative and and she this is the first book in the phyllis wong mystery series phyllis wong's a young magician she's a young girl magician these are for young readers and young at heart readers and um sue uh, when i started writing this um i was sue ann and i hadn't actually met but um we we were corresponding and um and i told sue ann i'm doing this i've been asked to do this new um series about uh a, a, a young girl magician and Sue Ann was thrilled because it's something that she had had in the back of her mind all the time um, for quite a quite a time and so um, yeah I, I, I wrote these books and and Phyllis Sue Ann became the inspiration for Phyllis Phyllis does a lot of very old sort of magic she uses a lot of old magic things um, props that she inherited from her great great grandfather um, who was a great magician in his own right and and I had I had been collecting a lot of these beautiful sorts of props. This is this was made by Norm Nielsen. It's a it's a re replica of an Akito um, jewel box mystery prop, and it's just these beautiful he, these are decorated. They're now made by um, his his wife because Norm's no longer with us. Uh, Lupe still makes a lot of these props now, it's and the jewel box prop. mystery and all and and Phyllis performs these 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 wonderful things, and um and. And and yeah, so so I was using these as, as inspiration, and now um, Sue Ann in in some of some of her acts when she performs, um, she, when we go out to schools and do the Phyllis Wong mystery show, um, I I get up and I you know I read a bit from from some of the books, and um, um, and then Sue Ann will will do the second half of the show and she'll perform magic that Phyllis performs, which the tricks have appeared. Uh, in the books, um, so so we're we're sort of hearkening back to the the great Akito uh, era, the style of you know Theo Bamberg, who, yeah. who performed and invented as Akito, and um and so Sue Ann's doing a lot of magic in these shows that that not many other magicians are doing, and certainly children and young people who see our shows would probably never have seen a lot of the uh, the Akito effects before, 
And that's fantastic, you know, especially the era too of like YouTube where they can sit there and look, look up a tree. That's probably something that they wouldn't even know where to begin to look up. Well, that's it. That's it. The mm. the, the, the the secrets haven't been sprung, have they? With <laughs> no. a lot of the well, stuff. actually, I have to say. Um, in the first book. In the first book, oh. <laughs> when Jeffrey was writing it, he almost gave away <laughs> the sub trunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you can't do that. You know, and it's funny because writers, they only just tweak a couple of words and it's all covered up. It's a yeah. trick in itself, what, what they do. Yes, yeah. And it's it's the the wonderful thing is that if I if I if I need a trick for Phyllis to do to propel the action or just to I say to Sue Ann, like I said to Sue Ann when I was writing one of the books, I said, Oh, is there is is there a card trick that Phyllis could do where she does this and that and that and then produces the card? And Sue Ann said, just give me five minutes. And she went away and adapted something and came back and actually performed the trick. So I got her to perform the trick several times, which of course you never ask a magician to do it more than once, but I had, you know, special reason to do that. And she would do it and I just made notes of the sequence and then I'd write it up into the into the narrative, into the story. And so a lot of the magic, all the magic that Phyllis does actually, actually, um, oh, somebody said, where can we buy the books? Amazon, they're on Amazon, um, they're, they're e-books and they're print books. So yeah, yeah and they're- um, Did I see something about there was a podcast or audio? Kyra Jim, maybe. Kyra Jim, yeah. Oh, with Kyra Jim. Well, yeah, there's audio Kyra Jim's, but yeah. not the. Oh, yeah, there were, there were the. Yeah, oh, the, okay. All the all the Kyra Jim's was done as audio books. Yeah. Yeah, we can do sign books. Um, yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk about that. Macca is clapping his paws. <laughs> really yeah, Macca is very excited. Macca is is a very big fan of Sue Ann's. So uh, she'll sign her book. She's she very excited. Available too, so she'll sign a magic book and all that. But it, it's lovely now because now Sue Ann is 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 not only with her corporate work and her her grown up work. When I'm not in the lockdown, which is when we're not in lockdown, just yeah, call it semi retirement bad. at the moment. I think. <laughs> but but doing this as well, we're presenting we're presenting stuff. And 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 the other thing I just want to say before, and then I'll shut up because I go on too much. But, no, um, that's not no, fine. The, the other fine. Thing, I've we're always, not listening to you. I've always <laughs> felt I've always felt that every magic trick is actually a there's a story in it. And yeah. you know you can you can either make it quite obvious there's a story in a magic trick by by you know like there's a whole there's, with the Aikido jewel box mystery there's a whole um, plot that you can go through and talk, tell the story of how the jewels were put into this box and then they disappeared and all all that sort of stuff or there's there's more subtle stories of you know how something jumps from there to there you can you can weave stories in any everywhere and and we we've sort of become in in our in our being together, um, it's it's a thing of magic and story. It it, it all inter intertwines um, really well, yeah, it's doesn't fun. it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it's, awesome. It's, Just tell me stories. <laughs> I'll do the magic. That's wonderful. So so Jeffrey, tell me what it's like, or tell lay people what it's like to be married to a magician. I love it. <laughs> I love it. The first, I mean, at first, he's the, easy, he's easy place to worry. <laughs> I have to say that. No, um, at first, at, at first I was a bit, a bit trepidatious because I remember early on in our marriage, I was in the kitchen, I was cooking something, and we had a, a gas stove that you lit with a, a match. It was an old, an older kitchen, not in the house we're in now. It was another place, and um, and we had a little bowl that we kept in the kitchen where all the, the burnt matches would be put, yeah. and. And um, this actually happened. I'm not embellishing this. For once, I'm not <laughs> embellishing a story. This really happened. So we were sitting there and um, and I was standing there and I just lit the oven and I, I was cooking a roast or something. I don't know. I, I like to cook. And I put the match in the in the bowl. And the, the bowl was like full of matches. There were about 3,000 matches in there. And, you know, we hadn't thrown them out. <laughs> now you're but, embellishing. Okay, there may be 300 <laughs> matches. And Sue Ann said to me, this was very early on. She said, you like to recycle, don't you? And I said, well, yeah, when, when I can. And she said, and she she said give me the match and so I took the match out of the bowl gave it to her the match that I just lit the match that was dead and she picked up the matchbox and, and the match lit again and I was like oh I felt like Darren from Bewitched I thought what's going on here and, it, <laughs> and then I said I said that thing you shouldn't say which is do it again and she reached into the bowl and took another dead match out and and she lit it again and I said, do it again. And she re and she took a another dead match and, <laughs> and lit it again. And this went on for about four times. And she said, now you do it. So I lit and it wouldn't do it. And I took, I took every one of those 3,300 matches out. <laughs> from, 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 we had matches all over the floor. And that was, uh, at, at first I was a bit trepidatious. I didn't know what I was in for. But 
and I never and I love not knowing how the magic works it's like she keeps this intrigue from me I know how one trick works because I have to help her with it on stage I have yeah. to I have to strike it after the performance after the magic's being performed so I have to be careful but that's the only trick that I really know how it works um, all the others um, I deliberately do not want to know because and it's wonderful and and she often she's so generous she often says can I show you how it works can I show you how it works you know knowing that I would never tell anyone and I say no yeah. don't don't I don't want to know but that's I a magician it. thing you know because I do the same thing like I get excited when I'm doing a trick and want to go do you want to see how it's done I'll show you I'll show you but yeah I think the worst thing for a lay person is once they know how a trick's done I think it takes away the mystery of yeah. magic Mm -hmm. um there are a few tricks that I wish I didn't know how they were done because now I watch them I don't feel the same way I do about them yeah. but yeah. yeah I I imagine that you guys would have a lot of fun playing pranks on each other with magic tricks and yeah she she does the pranks I think I you know, <laughs> I don't do so many I I'm I'm sort of getting a bit more scatty I'm forgetting <laughs> words now so so it's I don't know what's happening but um yeah like the other day I I said um oh I wanted to we have psyllium here and I, you know, to take sometimes, oh, and I, well, I take it. And I said, oh, do we have any of the, um, the squirrel pops or something? I squirrel gum. Yeah, squirrel gum. That's <laughs> He's right. asking for squirrel gum. I go, what squirrel gum? So I work, on a <laughs> I work on a different level to her in that I keep my intrigue because I'm getting confused, but yeah. she, uh, <laughs> she, she's in, tro in control of the intrigue. But you're it, keeping it the mystery fun. in the relationship too because she never knows what you're talking about. So it's That's mysterious. Right. <laughs> you're right. both words, mysterious. Words get all mixed up. <laughs> Luckily, they don't get mixed up when I'm talking about. You know, it's, it's lovely having having um, having magic in the in the in the house all the time. I'm and so like, happy seeing you guys. I see your shows, your Phyllis Wong shows, whether you're on stage and you're on character and you're doing your magic and promoting the books. I think that's just such a beautiful combination of artistry between you two. It works. It's so it? amazing. It's yeah. fun. It really it's works fun. well. Yeah. She's... Because he makes the kids laugh. Like he really gets them in a good mood before I come on because I could just, you know, me and kids like, like uh, Oh no, but... she's great with kids because <laughs> she comes on and she has a lot of audience participation in her magic. You know, she gets yeah. them up for, for nearly all the tricks, gets one at least one volunteer up and uh each trick and 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 they love it. They love being there, they love being part of it. They love, they love I, I've seeing... warmed to kids now. I, I do like them a lot now. Yeah, you're really, I, good, I, with, I'm a, I'm really a, good with them. I'm mellowing. I must be, a, I'm aging. <laughs> okay, Just... I'm aging, all right? Like, oh, look. <laughs> and see, that's another thing, you know, you say um, about sort of, you know, I, I was always blonde, okay? I, yeah. Because, you know, it was, it was. Um, the I drew Magini. All of that, yeah. And it, and it was handy because it yeah. got attention about, you know, like a, my scalp hurt after a while. But but I thought if I'm going to get into kids stuff, I thought, no, I'm, I, I don't want them thinking that they need to go and blonde their hair to do the magic. And and um, apart from the fact that I didn't want to blonde it anymore, but I thought, no, no. But like I've got some nice streaks now from my normal yeah. gray. <laughs> It's all natural now. I really like the new look, to be honest. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's very pretty. Just grey coming through now. And I, I don't care. It's like, you know, if the kids see it and they go, like, the, the attention's on the magic then. It's, it's like, oh, yeah, she's an older person. Um, ah, it's, you know, she can do some cool stuff. There's the magic. And um, it's like, yeah, and, and it doesn't matter. It's okay going grey. It's all right. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. really not a big deal sort of yeah. thing, you know. And so I just want to, um, yeah, encourage kids that they don't have to actually be a certain way to, they, they can just be themselves you know I like that yeah. So yeah. I, I, I get a bit funny with kids like that I don't know I, I love kids I do love kids okay I haven't had them but I do love them I do love them <laughs> you can have mine if you want <laughs> you take, I can send you in the mail <laughs> uh, so are you, are you guys going to be doing any online zoom shows during the lockdown for Phyllis Wong or are you just going to take a breather something when the new Cara gym comes out yeah yeah, maybe. There. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we haven't really thought about putting it together I know people no. are doing probably pretty well doing stuff um on zoom but We've never really explored that. I suppose yeah. um, he's been really busy writing. I've been really busy putting the covers together because, um, I mean, that's another thing I did before Magic and during Magic is, is um, I, I drew. I, these are not my drawings. Well, that is. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, but, um, but yeah. yeah, I'm not a professionally trained. Well, I'm not really. I am a bit, like I have trained a little bit, but um, back when I was in my teens and 20s, um, I'd be doing sort of illustrations and stuff. Yeah. And, um, yeah, now I'm, I'm just spending like 
years <laughs> doing and, these and things. And Sue Ann, Sue Ann also does all the trailers for, for the books. You know, most of the books have two trailers. Uh, a lot of the books have two trailers yeah. we've got on our YouTube channel. So yeah. she completely creates these trailers and she, you know, micro edits them, chooses the music, does they're all like the little graphics. shows, aren't they're they? like little shows. They're like I the, love your little trailers. Your little, they're, um, they're so over the top and so, awesome. and so tongue in cheek and so, you know, sort of ostentatious but she makes those and she makes them all but they say what are you doing lockdown and, you know it's like well i've got plenty to do in lockdown i i, I study i got the <laughs> drawings i put the covers and do the trailers and it's so and talented we, clean the house. We, <laughs> we deliberately don't have a tv through choice we don't have a tv so you know this house is full of books it's full of magic it's full of any you look around and there's just over in the corner there there's a whole rack of victor well it's a display cabinet of victorian uh, sort of mythological creatures that have been fossilized. You've seen them. And, yeah, <laughs> and you and I love your here. house. <laughs> they're, they're my sort of that's my sort of gothic um, cabinet of curiosities over there. Yeah. And and she concocts from I have the best birthday presents. I'll tell you what she concocts complete stories about these creatures that she makes. Not just the story. There'll be a, like an eight page beautifully crafted poem and ode about this particular creature and then there'll be a film as well so i'll get this film showing me the history of how this little scottish brownie uh, traveled from a lighthouse up in the north of scotland to 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 this house and it's wow. just she comes up with these incredible they're like stories within within themselves and in fact um she's given me the already the the, the basis for the next Phyllis Wong story for the, the eighth one, which I'll oh. be writing next year. Yeah, you have. Oh, because yeah, of something yeah, yeah. You came Did up we with. hear it here first? Did we hear it here first? Yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> it's Phyllis Wong number eight. Next year it'll be out. But she, in, through her, coming up with stories and putting things together and and, and through her creativity, it, it feeds off and, I, and I'm going to uh, rip it off. It's spectacular. <laughs> Rob. Hi, Rob. Oh, hi, hi. Hello, Rob. <laughs> hi, how are you? Really how are you? well. Nice, hey, nice, nice to meet you, Belladonna. Hi, uh, nice to meet you too. Yeah, I, uh, you, when I'm not Rob, I, I have previously been known as Eddie Spaghetti. But, yeah. uh, oh. it's, it's Rob on, you know, Rob, <laughs> Rob on, on Zoom. Wonderful. <laughs> Hope you're staying safe. Right. Yes, yes, thank you. Excellent. And I hope, hope the same for you too. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think that's all, I've, all the questions I've got for you guys, but if you are happy to have any questions from any of the people in here for a minute or two, if you've got a couple of extra minutes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. since we're on, on, the, on a topic of um, female magicians, what's it like having a female magician turning up to a club, Rob? And Andrew and Jeff oh, and Ben? <laughs> no, no, so can you repeat the question? What's it like when you see a female magician turning up at a club? Well, you or know, what's a it like and, what is it, and what's it like for you guys, like in men in general? I know like you yes. can speak on your behalf, but men in general, what's it like just seeing a, a woman? I've never yes. asked that before of anyone. Yes. I've, never, I've just assumed that they just see me the same. Like yes, well, well um, uh, uh, I, I have to admit you are it. I have not, you are the, the, the sole woman magician that I've ever met, but maybe I just need to get now. out more. <laughs> I, I, I need to get out more, but, uh, but for me, it, it was wonderful. And, and uh, uh, I, I was first introduced to you, both of your work um, through, through writing. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I was with the Australian, not, not for quite a long time, uh, for many years, but I was with the Australian Society of Authors and I went to a workshop and I think it was Eb, uh, Deborah, uh, Bella, uh, you know, showed some video and, you know, so that I was very, very impressed by that. Um, but um, no, I, I think it's absolutely wonderful. I, and I, I also love the fact that, you know, the character that you were using, there was so much, it was so theatrical and, and such wonderful presence. But beyond that, I didn't, you know, I, I don't think your being a woman was, yeah, any, any issue at all. So, I, yeah. That's great. Because I, I, it's just, yeah, it's just like we're magicians. We just do, we got stuff we love doing. And that's yes. what I loved at the conventions all over the world. That's what I noticed, you know, yes. more conventions and, you know, uh, huge ones uh, all over the States and everywhere. Yeah. They, it didn't matter. It's just the magic. Yes, and yes. It's so lovely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just being in a room full of all these people who are just loving this wonderful thing that we were doing, which is magic. It's just yes, lovely. yes, indeed. It was lovely. Yeah. Sue Ann, um, so Mac of the Bear wants to know if you're ready for them to show the um, promo for the book. I think. Is that what? 
Oh, here we go. Oh, oh you. <laughs> Thank you, Macca the bear. <laughs> He's a magical bear. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's number one. Number one. Yeah. Number one. yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of wigs in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Even on that trailer, that, that, that character Barry English, you'll see that he's got a false nose and a false chin. And Sue Ann made those out of latex, so it's total creative. Wow. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never performing in gloves. <laughs> thank you, thank you Maggie the Bear. Thank Very you, sweet. Maggie. Wonderful. <laughs> Well Very done. Good. Oh, it's all it's all a bit of fun, but it, it, I, I love I love um just um coming up with an idea and just sort of I guess just making it into uh, a, a little world. You know, I get lost in the, the fantasy of it all. I think we've done yeah. we've done shoots uh, for these books where I have had to dress up as seven different Turkish women. <laughs> um, in the Turkish Women's Championship tent erection team. They were in the Olympic Games <laughs> seven years ago. No, seriously, they were. It's true. And, yeah, they were. Oh, so wow. I had to, I've had to dress up as satyrs who have gone, who have sort of gone a bit rancid. And, and, and I've had to. I've stuck, and she stuck horns on my head with super glue. With super glue, oh yes. And and to get it off, she ripped off parts of my skull. So we, <laughs> and and being the wizard, I, you. Were... I'm the wizard. Yeah, it was before I had this beard. We bought. We got a really lovely beard from. Um, yeah, from um, and his hair. Yeah, from that shop, and it was a really Krylon, and his Krylon, yeah, that's hair right. was long, and, and yeah, it, it just went long. white, and, and it just, just whited it. Mm. And I'm saying, and he's saying, "Stop it! You're hurting me!" And I'm going, "Look, this is all for the art of it, okay?" And I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm the just the worst makeup artist in the world because I'm, <laughs> I'd be, you know, I'm just bash, you there's know. No, there's no sympathy. There's no sympathy. It's yeah. like stop complaining. This is this is for what you got to do. Stop complaining. <laughs> It's worth it because we have these funny little, and you know, long after we're dead, these films will be out there and people are going to go, Who were they? But it doesn't <laughs> matter because we had fun. And see, as magicians, like you get hurt and you got to go on stage. What about that time I was shooting fireballs? For I was going to say that we were, we were doing <laughs> oh. a, 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 a kids' lit fest up in Ipswich in Queensland, yeah. and um, she is so professional. She, we, you know, because you work, you have to work very closely together in a lot of these rooms and halls and things up there because yeah. they're not really, they're not stages. We weren't on a stage. And at the beginning of this thing, when Sue Ann made her entrance, after I'd done my reading, Sue Ann would make her entrance through the audience. And Phyllis, in one of these books, it's in this book um, that Phyllis does a trick. She gets a new trick where she fires flames out of her hands. And so Sue Ann did that to enter. And at the end of the first show after we she came on and then 40 minutes later the show ended and she came up to me can I, I can tell the story, and came up to me and she said can you smell this and, and, I, and she said that is the smell of severely burnt flesh because one of these flames hadn't, hadn't worked magically as it's supposed to and it had burnt all around her fingers all around there now, she did she did the rest of that show and I was this far away from her and I had no idea that she was in terrible pain. I didn't flinch. There was no didn't, tears. No. So, okay, so if someone wants advice, be professional. Yeah, like if someone yeah. let yourself get burnt. Not <laughs> princess. You just got to go on. <laughs> and I was so impressed by that—the the yeah. level of professionalism and the level of you know the pain threshold. I don't have it. <laughs> Women have got pain threshold, don't they? <laughs> oh yeah, we do. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Well, guys, thank I, you I get... so much. Sorry, a quick question. Yep. Just a nerdy um, art uh, video question. Do you use Envato elements? Yeah, yeah, Envato music. I use a lot of that. All right. Um, and, and and for the you know all the faces that popped up, they those are, are from Envato as well. No, they were from Deposit Photos. We I have an account. We have an account. Okay. With Deposit Photos, and when ah oh, I can't remember what they call. I don't even get their emails anymore, but. There was a time where there's a company that sort of would spam you with a lot of, um, oh, buy this, it's a really good price and whatever. And then yeah. suddenly something came up of deposit photos. You can get, you know, like 100 photos or 400 photos or something for just $50. Or I was alerted to it from K-Boards, actually, the people on K-Boards. Oh, that's how I got it. Yeah. To yeah. See, I yeah. don't get those anymore. I don't no, know why. But anyway, um, <clears throat> and sometimes they get deals through deposit photos. Not often, but they did. And I grabbed 
the photo deals and I grab the video deals because mm -hmm. um, there's, I can't do you know, because I've only got an iPhone or you know an iPad to do videos with. Um, yeah, so so I get these small little things and then um, yeah, so it's deposit photos for the images mostly, and um, Invato Music um, Audio Jungle Audio Jungle <laughs> yeah right. Invato Thank you. for Thank you. Uh, for the music yeah. Yeah, and all the Kairiji music and all the, yeah. most of the Phyllis Wong, the Phyllis Wong, the first Phyllis Wong that went through Alan and Unwin and they got that, uh, it was a free one and I found it on um, YouTube Audio Library um, and I found mm. probably one other since then, but the rest is definitely, it's all in Bato, mm. just about. Yeah. Almost all. Thank you. Can I say something? Yeah, yeah. go ahead, Maka. It's dead, sweetie. Oh, dead. Hi. <laughs> why, is it, why is it that Phyllis Wong Looks suspiciously like Belladonna. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Belladonna, Belladonna's got a got a certain um, je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Yes. <laughs> She's the one who travels. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, Paris about that. Paris looked much. Sorry well, about maybe that. Maybe I got my inspiration from, you know, maybe Bella. Who knows? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I get inspiration from everyone. <laughs> So they're Bella oh. from you through Sue Ann through into the book. So I'll have to get a purple coat now. <laughs> <laughs> and yellow. And, and yellow. No, and you, yeah. you could, you could go on stage. You could go on stage and play the part. <laughs> nah. No, no, I'll leave that to Sue Ann and Jeffrey. They are an amazing team. No, you can't, Besides, you can't. I think I have a little bit on my plate at the moment. <laughs> With like ma Magic Martini Mondays and tra Trashed Out and Twisted Tuesdays and... And now the lockdown, in, you know. Oh, that didn't help, did it? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, Bella, thank you for so much for doing all of this. And I'm mm. really looking forward to seeing who you've got up next. I know, Ekaterina. And, um, so and we love Sue Ann. I know. <laughs> oh, you're a darling, Maka. <laughs> <laughs> you're a darling. Thank you so much for being supportive. Um, no, I'm looking forward to some of the people that I'm sure you're going to be getting on. I, I have a feeling that... Um, I can almost guess some of the others that you might have on. Oh yeah, I think you, yeah. you know, no one of them. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have a feeling, and I, I'm really looking forward to that. So me too, yeah, really yeah. To I that. appreciate you guys being a part of the show, and I will put some links up on the Facebook page as well, just to give you a shout out, and hopefully, you'll have a few more people who are fans and followers of Cairo Gym and Phyllis Wong, and I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with in the future. Thank you, thank you, Bella. Thank you so Bella. much Bella. for having me. You're great. Thank you Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.